Your smartphone through the genius of Einstein. Chapter 4. The Max Born Asymmetry Topples the Many Worlds Theory. Our premise is that we have a new civilization based on these smartphones. If Einstein were exploring nature today, he would start with the quantum mechanics he finds inside your smartphone. Hi, Einstein is about to tell us what he's been thinking since he died in 1955. And then later in this video, I will apply those ideas to wave function collapse and show that they topple the many worlds theory. Good morning, Jeff. I've discovered that being dead for 70 years clarifies my thinking. Before death, I was wasting my time objecting to quantum mechanics and focusing on local realism. My mind is working much better since I died and I now see everything more clearly. I've lost interest in local realism. The glaring contradiction of quantum mathematics is that quantum math works so astonishingly well. It is dead accurate across the board. Quantum math is the most accurate and productive mathematics humans have ever had. The source of smartphones, the internet, the entire high-tech economy. And yet, when we ask this mathematics for the simplest thing, namely a coherent sense of what the quantum world is like, it fails and leads to endless disputes among scientists. Today, I have a thought experiment that solves this mystery. I think the mystery is due to an asymmetry. Here are two pictures of the same tree. They are asymmetrical. One image is the negative of the other. Let's say that the left picture is how quantum mechanics sees the tree, and the right is how nature sees the tree. Quantum mechanics sees the tree using wave function psi, but nature uses minus psi. Quantum mathematics is the negative of nature's mathematics which is why we can't get a coherent picture of the quantum world. When we take our mathematics to the lab, we use the Born rule, which squares psi and gives us the same probabilities as nature. Thus, we reach the incorrect conclusion that our mathematics is accurate. I refer to this as the Max Born asymmetry. If we were to change our mathematics from psi to minus psi, that would mean our quantum waves travel in the opposite direction as quantum particles. There would have to be zero energy waves. Although I was the one who invented the idea of wave-particle duality, we need wave-particle divorce. So what would we call these waves that quantum particles follow backwards? Well. We call them elementary waves. Okay, elementary waves. What would be the difference between quantum math and our new math? It should make no difference in the behavior of bound particles, harmonic oscillators, nor in the periodic table. But it would make a big difference in how we understand free particles, such as in the double slit experiments. So Jeff, can you design a variation of the double slit experiment which would produce a different outcome if the particles travel in the opposite direction as the waves? Well, yes, I have already designed such an experiment. So what do the scientists say when you propose this experimental design? Well, I joined the American Physical Society and over the course of a decade, I presented a dozen times the theory of elementary waves, TEW, including a detailed description of this experiment and inviting and encouraging people to conduct it. Each time I presented, uh, the audience responded exactly the same. They sat there with blank faces. They made no comments, asked no questions. The moderator sat there with a blank face asked no questions and made no comments. And at the end of my time, the moderator would say, thank you, Dr. Boyd, for that excellent presentation. And the audience would applaud, and I would leave, having received no feedback whatsoever. So I have this bucket here, with which I have a little skit to explain to you my experience. 
With one exception, we quantum scientists would give anything to understand the quantum world, to understand how it looks, how it acts, what's behind the mathematics. But the one exception is this. If the quantum world is organized in such a way that quantum particles travel in the opposite direction as quantum waves, then we don't want to know about it. We have no interest in the quantum world under those circumstances. Am I making myself clear? So I go and tell Einstein what kind of reception his idea had. Einstein says, That's ridiculous. They never treated me that way. Go back and tell them I said this. Well, I'm reluctant to say that to them because they'll laugh at me. Well, they won't laugh at me. So I go back and report to the experts, look, I've been speaking with Einstein, who's in this smartphone over here, and here's what he says. He says, take this idea seriously. If you tell us that Einstein has spoken to you out of somebody's smartphone, then... <laughs> That's this guy so is crazy. Ass. He is out of his we mind. Don't believe it at all. He's hallucinating. He doesn't know what, what he's talking about. about. <laughs> that completes our discussion of the Max Born asymmetry. We turn now to wave function collapse and how it relates to the double slit experiment. I am about to explain an idea that lies at the center, the core of quantum mechanics. And quantum mechanics, by the way, is necessary if you want to understand how your smartphone works. So the idea I'm about to describe is so stupid, so absurd, that experts have decided it can't, it can't happen that way. That's impossible. The idea is called wave function collapse or collapse of the superposition. It goes by both, uh, both names. Uh, so, I mean, look, if a dot appears on a screen over here, uh, quantum mechanics says that the dot only exists as soon when you see it. And before you see it, it's diffused. It, it has no specific location. It's floating in space or in, like a fog. It's smeared out through space like peanut butter and wave function collapse has to do with how does this spread out fog become a specific dot. Scientists who understand this find it so absurd that they're willing to go to any lengths to discard wave function collapse. They're willing to say, look, there is no such thing as a quantum world. They're willing to say, well, we live in an infinite number of parallel universes. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to explain first, what is wave function collapse? It has to do with this contraption here, which is called the double slit experiment. On the left, you have a gun that fires a particle. In the middle, there's a barrier with two slits in it. And on the right, there is a target screen. The gun fires a particle which goes through the slits and makes a dot on the target screen. If you fire enough particles, what emerges on the screen is a wave pattern. So how does this happen? So here's how quantum mechanics says this double slit experiment works. A particle is fired from the gun, but immediately it disappears and becomes a cloud. This is called a probability cloud. It tells you the likelihood that the particle is here or there or some other place, but it's diffuse, smeared out across space. This cloud moves to the right, goes through the two slits and continues to the right until it hits the target screen. And then something happens. Pay attention. Two things happen simultaneously. Suddenly, the entire cloud vanishes. And at that same instant, a dot appears somewhere on the target screen. The cloud becomes the dot. So when the dot appears, the cloud on both sides of the barrier has to vanish instantly faster than the speed of light, which is impossible. When the cloud becomes a dot, we call that wave function collapse because the probability cloud is called a wave function. The basic idea is wave particle duality, which alleges that a wave particle can act like a particle 
being located at one point in space, but it can also act like a wave spread out widely. This abrupt transition from a cloud to a single point is the Achilles heel, the weakest idea in quantum mechanics. There is no mathematical and no scientific explanation about how or why this happens. Wave function collapse is so illogical that the experts themselves will do anything to discard it to get rid of it. One way the experts get rid of wave function collapse is by what's called the Copenhagen interpretation, which says, don't think about it, just use the equations. Another way to get rid of it is something called the many worlds theory. The many worlds theory is an unbelievably complicated way of getting rid of wave function collapse. In 1957, a graduate student named Hugh Everett wrote a PhD thesis in which he proposed a solution, which is called the many worlds theory. He eliminated wave function collapse. He said that a dot could appear anywhere on the target screen, so he proposed that the universe splits apart at that moment and forms a zillion other universes, all parallel to each other. In each of these multiple worlds, there's an almost exact copy of you, but in each of these other worlds, a dot appears at a different point on the target screen. Therefore, overall, there is no wave function collapse because in each of these different worlds, the dot appears eventually at all points on the target screen. Now, perhaps you think this solution to the problem of wave function collapse is worse than the original problem. Originally, we couldn't understand how a dot appears on a target screen, and now we end up with a zillion uh, identical or almost identical worlds. Ay ay ay. If that's what you think, then you have correctly understood the many worlds theory. Many, many scientists believe that this many worlds theory is true. It's the only way they can figure out how to get rid of wave function collapse. Wave function collapse is so full of contradictions that quantum experts are willing to go to any lengths to discard it. Uh, they're willing to say, they're willing to give up their own sanity. They're willing to say, okay, I will believe that I live in a many worlds universe, which is cuckoo. Uh, so isn't there some way of remaining sane and getting rid of wave function collapse? And the answer is yes. I'm about to tell you about the theory of elementary waves, TEW, which is a little bit hard to understand, but you'll be able to get it which moves wave function collapse from the target screen, where it do does all that damage, over to the particle gun, which you will find is a very natural place for it to live. So TEW is, comes out of the Max Born asymmetry that Einstein told you about, which means that nature uses wave function minus psi, which means that quantum particles follow zero energy waves backwards, and we're calling those waves elementary waves going from the target screen towards the double slit barrier. In the double slit experiment, elementary waves start at the target screen, go backwards through the two slits, and the wave coming backwards through the top and bottom slit interfere with each other as they approach the particle gun. The particle sitting in the gun sees a zillion incoming elementary waves, one from each point on the target screen, and it randomly selects one uh, to follow backwards. That is when wave function collapse occurs when the particle leaves the gun having made a decision about which elementary wave it will follow backwards. After that, it is a deterministic experiment. The particle follows its one wave with a probability of one. It goes through one and only one slit. It doesn't matter which slit. And inevitably hits that point on the target screen from which its elementary wave originated. This will reproduce exactly the pattern on the target screen that we are familiar with and will solve all kinds of problems. 
In summary, Einstein spoke of the Max Born asymmetry, which leads to the idea that quantum particles follow zero energy elementary waves backwards, which topples the many worlds theory because TEW deals with wave function collapse in a sensible way, unlike the many worlds theory. Wave function collapse makes sense if something decisive happens that changes history, like you getting married. Something decisive happens when the particle leaves the gun in one direction or another. Nothing decisive happens when the particle hits the target screen. So, you have a choice. Would you rather accept the weirdness of TEW saying that quantum particles follow zero energy elementary waves backwards? Or would you rather live with the idea that there's an infinite number of you living in almost identical universes? This video is based on a scholarly article published in a peer-reviewed physics journal. See notes below. This ends the Born Asymmetry Toppling the Many Worlds Theory. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. The next video is how your smartphone uses quantum mechanics.